This is Valley News Live at noon. Well, the weather is feeling pretty pleasant now, but could we see any chances of rain? Let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green and Lisa, what's going on today? Happy Thursday. Good afternoon. We are looking at some storm chances for parts of the region, especially for our neighbors to the west in western North Dakota. Here's a look at our storm risk for the day today, and this is mainly for tonight uh, for us here in the valley. Uh, but out to the west, we have an enhanced risk in Williston and in Dickinson, and that's where we may see the potential for all types of severe weather, including the potential for tornadoes there. And then as that marches eastward late tonight, it will eventually approach the valley but it will be weakening as it does so. So that's the good news for us. But if you're in our western counties, the Devil's Lake Basin, down toward the James River Valley, that's where you're going to want to watch out for the potential for some strong storms. Have that Valley News Live weather app set to alert you if you're going to bed early tonight because it may be a late one. And as we take a look right now, you can see we have some variable cloudiness out there right now. We also are seeing some uh, one little cell uh, moving into our western viewing area approaching the Devil's Lake Basin here today. Uh, so that's one little rogue cell but the main event is further west and you could see that cluster of storms out to uh, the west of us there. So that's what eventually will be approaching us and we'll have uh, the chances for rain in our western counties again for tonight. Otherwise, the rest of the day looking OK. We'll have some partly to mostly cloudy skies and temperatures into the 70s. We'll have details on the timing of this event coming up in just a couple of minutes. And we'll stay tuned with you to see what to expect, especially if we have plans today. Thanks, Lisa. Well, Minnesota's Attorney General says the state's utilities mismanaged their natural gas purchases and then tried to pass the cost on to the customers. This happened after a historic winter storm hit big gas producing states in the south earlier this year. The Attorney General's office says this led the state's utility companies to overbill customers by hundreds of millions of dollars. They're recommending the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission only allow the companies to recover about half of the $800 million in cost that they're trying to get from customers. Heavy rain and gusty winds pelted southeastern parts of the U.S. as tropical storm Elsa traveled up the Atlantic coast. By this morning, Elsa was about 45 miles west of Florence, South Carolina, bringing torrential downpour and maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. South Carolina is forecast to receive up to eight inches of rainfall in isolated parts of the state, with possible tornadoes in the Carolinas and southeastern Virginia. No storm-related injuries have been reported in the Carolinas so far. Well, the search for survivors from the condo collapse is officially over. Last night, the search was paused to hold a moment of silence for those who've been lost. Sixty bodies have been recovered and up to 80 people are still missing. Manuel Bajorquez is in Surfside. At the rubble of the Champlain Tower South, the solemn work goes on. But after two weeks of round-the-clock searching, local leaders were forced to face a painful truth. Our hearts still hoped to find survivors. But our experience and expertise indicated that was no longer possible. The search moves now to recovery. The work continues with all speed and urgency. All task forces are being deployed from across the country and the world. In a tribute to those lost, the rescue teams held a moment of silence and prayer before returning to the pile again in an effort officials believe will take several more weeks. But in those first hours after the collapse, a small few were rescued from the rubble. Devin Gonzalez was one of them, a 16-year-old who dreams of playing college volleyball. She's a star player on coach Amy Morgan's club team. She apologized for missing practice. She apologized, she for, apologized missing practice. for missing practice. Wow. Like that same day that it happened, she was apologizing for missing practice. That's who she is. The night of the collapse, Devin fell four floors, breaking her femur. She and her mother, Angela Gonzalez, were both rescued, but her father, Edgar, has yet to be found. I just know she's so young. Edgar's such an amazing person and I feel so bad for her because she's not going to have her dad at these, you know, amazing years that he should be there. After several surgeries for her broken femur, Devin has been able to take her first few steps again, but her family says she's been doing it using a walker. She did tell her coach she is determined to get back on the volleyball court, but her family, like so many others here in Surfside, are dealing with immense loss. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Surfside, Florida. Meanwhile, the first hearing among dozens of lawsuits filed following the collapse had its first hearing in the Miami-Dade courtroom. 
The plaintiff is one of the 37 people rescued by firefighters from the tower. The judge indicated that the legal claims will be grouped together because one attorney who represents several families says there are many common facts in the cases. Those who lost possessions will be in one group and those who lost loved ones in another group of suits. The initial attorneys for the condo association said they couldn't comment on the lawsuit and were doing their best to help families and aid in the investigation. Well, police in Polk County says alcohol was a factor in a boating accident over the weekend. It happened on July 3rd on Maple Lake near Mentor, Minnesota. The boater, Jeremy Dietz, was the only person on board is expected to be okay. Two people are in jail following an extensive search of a farm following a burglary report. It happened on Tuesday near Norcross, Minnesota. When deputies arrived, one person drove away while the other person was still somewhere on the farm. A perimeter was set up in the cornfield and authorities searched it for more than four hours until they found the second person. They're now both in the Transverse County Jail. A veteran police dog with the Cass County Sheriff's Office has passed away. K-9 Ed passed away two days ago after serving the county for 13 years. In that time, the department says he took drugs off the streets and caught multiple criminals. Ed worked with Deputy Dan Herdman his entire career. Here's a traffic alert for people driving a busy South Fargo Road. Southbound 25th Street is reduced to one lane between 9th and 12th Avenues as crews make utility repairs. The closure is expected to be in place for up to two days. Or are you ready to add more fun to your summer weekends? Now's the chance to check out the first Fargo pop-up food truck fest of the year. 11 specialty mobile food trucks will make their way to the Elks Lodge this weekend, offering gourmet mac and cheese, mini donuts, walleye wraps for starters. You can also see brisket and ribs on the screen. Now, there will also be a full cash bar, non-food vendors, and axe throwing. This will help food vendors after the cancellation of 20 to 30 events during the coronavirus pandemic. Now, an average event could make a food truck an average of between $3,000 to $5,000 per event. Now, the event will go from 8, 11 to 8 on Friday, 10 to 8 on Saturday, and 11 to 6 on Sunday. Indoor seating will be available and there's no admission to go. Well, coming up at noon, Japan has declared a state of emergency ahead of this year's Olympic Games. We'll tell you why fans are no longer allowed in the stands. But first, we see those rain chances here in the state. We'll head over to Lisa Green to tell us all about it. That's going to be coming up next.